So, blow gang. Now, side note, before we do get properly into this video, I saw this in the shop earlier, and obviously, yeah, everyone's been ranting and raving about it. They're not very great. But they're distinctly average. But of course, this video isn't just going to be a taste test of Logan Paul's drink. He's actually got a lot bigger things to worry about right now because he has just posted one of the worst responses I've ever seen. He's made a severe and continuous lapse of judgment, if you will, because he has responded to the scam allegations from CoffeeZilla. Now, it looks like this is going to be dealt with in court from Logan Paul's awful response video, but in case you haven't seen what CoffeeZilla has said about Logan Paul in his allegations of Logan Paul creating a scam, not even promoting one, by the way. It's his own creation. I thought I would quickly go through the main points of the three-part series. Obviously, I can't hit every single point because the videos are literally like 20 minutes long each. One's half an hour, I believe. There's a lot. So if you do want the most detail possible, explained a lot better than I could ever explain, then check out CoffeeZilla's videos. They're very, very good. But before we do get any further, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I'm trying to hit 400,000 subscribers on this channel, and we're about 30,000 away right now, so any help would be bloody lovely. But part one starts off with Logan Paul promoting his new business venture, CryptoZoo, and then cuts to the victims who lost thousands of thousands of dollars. CryptoZoo.co. I am so excited about this project. It's 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 so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. A fun game that earns you money. How much did you guys make from CryptoZoo? I lost around fifty thousand dollars in CryptoZoo. I lost forty thousand dollars. I lost around fifteen thousand US dollars. I lost twenty five thousand dollars. One hundred twenty thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars Australian. So yeah, as you can see, there's a ton of victims that lost thousands upon thousands of dollars. Which, by the way, spoiler alert. Logan Paul doesn't apologize for in the slightest. Coffee then goes on to explain what the game actually is. And you use zoo coins to then buy egg NFTs, which you can then hatch to become animals. You then can breed those two animals to become hybrid animals. For example, if you breed a gorilla and a kitten, you get a gore kitty. And the more rare... <laughs> It's a really, really fun game, isn't it? I just can't wait to get my hands on it, honestly. Like, fuck Grand Theft Auto. This is the game for me. Now, the funniest part is about this is that Logan Paul made it seem as if he's been working on this game for God knows how long. He's put millions of dollars into it. He's working with the best people there is to create the best game possible. But it turns out the animals that you create in this game are just stock pictures. Come to find out this handmade art story wasn't really true. It was actually Adobe stock photos mashed together. This is the sort of first <laughs> red flag of this project. I mean, look at the state of that man. Like, that's embarrassing. How have you actually promoted that with your chest? Now, obviously, with Logan Paul promoting this and being this kind of like mega star at this point, tons of people invested, but nothing was actually happening with the coin. It almost felt like they abandoned the coin. And Logan Paul, instead of reassuring these people that their money hasn't went to waste, he only spoke in the Discord twice, and these were the messages. Sober, currently shaking my head, and yo. <laughs> I mean, he's a hard worker, isn't he? Fucking hell. He's really putting his heart and soul into this project. By the way, they're the only two messages he sent in a year period, up until CoffeeZilla posted his videos about this, and then Logan Paul said something else. So we've got three messages now. Which, I guess, is an improvement. Then after so many people invested in this crypto project, Long Paul decided to abandon the project and start a new one called 99 Originals. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, yeah. This project line is going is, to be... Is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoo? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, that's this one, this one's egg. This one's going to be, uh, yeah. This will be, this will be the crazy I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, just straight up abandon the project. And in his newest video, he's trying to claim like he didn't. He definitely did. Then Coffee calls Logan Paul's manager, Jeff, and this is a key part to mention because Logan seemed to be furious about this. I've heard reports that CryptoZoo hasn't paid their development team, and I'm just reaching out for comment before I do this story. Um, I got your number from one of the development team, and uh, they just wanted to, I just want to follow up on that. Um, I have no comment for it. <laughs> okay, you're... <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect any more. Then in part two of this series, CoffeeZilla mentioned someone by the name of Eddie Albanez, who is someone that Logan Paul actually hired for this project, who was just a professional con man. My two interviews with him, and the first lie he told me is probably the oldest lie that he's told so many people, which is that he's an orphan. Yeah, that's only really scratching the surface. Like I said, there's so much more information in CoffeeZilla's video about Eddie Ibanez if you do want to see all the other scams and lies he's done. Uh, but yeah, just know 
bit of a dick. Logan also decided to work with someone called Jake the Crypto King, who used to be called the Collectibles Guru, who was a notorious scammer, especially in the Pokemon community, but now he's decided to do it in the Crypto community. The Crypto King. He's been involved with some of Logan's projects in the past, like Pokemon, for example. He was called the Collectibles Guru a few years ago. Nowadays, he goes by Crypto King, and he's an advisor for the CryptoZoo project. And just to give a bit more context on how easy it would be to work out that this guy isn't the right person to work with, a video was uploaded two years ago. It's got 2.1 million views talking about Logan Paul's Pokemon expert and the 375k scam. And this is one of many videos exposing the Collectibles Guru, but in this video they show a live stream where the Collectibles Guru actually scam people with a 375k Pokemon box. This is a resealed box. Oh my box. god, it's a resealed box. Alright, time to call the seller. Hi, we just opened wow. the box literally live and they're resealed packs. You've got to appreciate the acting though, right? A star for effort, mate. Then in part three, they show a lot of messages between Logan and his team working on CryptoZoo, and they're very sketchy. The first message they show is where they're talking about having concerns over if what they're doing is legal or not with the pre-sale for the coin, and Logan Paul seems pretty happy to do it anyways. And Jeff agrees and says, don't want to do anything that brings the SEC eyeballs. Now, not everyone wanted to be so cautious, though. Logan argues everyone does pre-sale with coins. Eddie agrees. He says, you absolutely can do it. I have the SEC down. Now, they never actually end up doing this pre-sale tactic because, like I said, they would run into legal problems. But what they did do is also just as sketchy. So what they decided to do was to launch the coins, but not actually announce them. So they stealth launched the coins and so no one would know about the coins so they could buy in quickly at a discounted rate. They didn't actually announce that they were launching this coin at all. They stealth launched it on June 11th and didn't announce this token through Logan until August 18th. And then I guess they got suspicious about Jake the Crypto King doing some dodgy stuff behind the scenes to which Jake the Crypto King is very annoyed in the group chat. He starts calling Logan Paul a scammer and a con man and says, you're not that guy, pal. And then Logan replies by basically saying, I am. Logan, you stole $40 million. You're a scammer. You're a con artist, all that stuff. You betrayed your community. The reality is you aren't that guy. And Logan responds. Oh, Jake, trust me, bro. I am that guy. And then to end the series, CoffeeZilla shows who sold and who didn't. Jeff and Logan didn't sell. The Crypto King sold for about $6 million, and Eddie Ibanez also made a fortune. Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul. But you know who did sell? Eddie Ibanez. And for my calculations, he made about $1.7 million. So yeah, that's basically the rundown of CoffeeZilla's series in the quickest way I possibly could, even though it really probably wasn't that quick. But like I said, he speaks about so much, so it's hard to narrow it down even quicker than that. But now we move over to Logan Paul's response. It's been a little while since CoffeeZilla uploaded these videos. It's been a few weeks. Logan Paul and CoffeeZilla have been going back and forth on Twitter, with Logan Paul even complimenting CoffeeZilla. While I generally appreciate Steven's creative genius and exceptional work ethic, I mean that. This one is simply not true. When appropriate, all bad actors will be exposed, explained, and held fully accountable. I'll speak further on Impulsive January 3rd. Which, by the way, it's January 4th right now, and that episode isn't out. Maybe it'll be out by the time I upload this, who knows. But what is out is Logan Paul's response on his main channel in a 7-minute video, responding to like an hour's worth of content, so... Already, it's not a good start. But yeah, let's give this a watch and go through his points, and um, enough of spoiler. There's not many of them. CoffeeZilla. I watched your three-part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam. And like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. Awful, awful start. As soon as someone makes a response by saying, Oh, you're just using me for clout, bro. Like, don't, don't. Like, that's an L straight away. As if Logan Paul hasn't put people's names in the titles, like, of podcasts and stuff. In fact, let's go over to his channel. So here we have him using Deji and Mayweather in the title of this podcast, even though they're not involved in the podcast. Here he is talking about Lana Rhodes' baby, who's also not on the podcast. Here he is talking about the end of Conor McGregor's career, who's not on the podcast. Like, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just stupid how he's now making the excuse that CoffeeZilla's using his name in titles. Like, He's an investigator who usually invests in crypto scams, and you just so happen to create one. Obviously, it's going to speak about it. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. Which basically translates to, I used to really like your content until you exposed me 
Now I think it's shit. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be defending myself with facts, something that you Ooh. have gotten in the habit of twisting as you continue to morph from an investigator to a gossip channel. He's definitely a lot more than a gossip channel, okay? Call me a gossip channel. I'll happily take that crown. He's definitely a lot more than that. He puts a lot of effort into his investigations. You see, CoffeeZilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. Yeah, you see that statement right there comes across pretty heavy even though when you actually like break it down it's nothing like the way he describes it is like coffeezilla used to work in the police force and he just kept wrongly arresting people and just had like a power trip and was just arresting random people on the street for no reason when in reality coffeezilla did an investigation on his youtube channel took the evidence to the police and then they didn't do anything about it which i mean isn't very uncommon with police, is it? And he's nothing more than the Keemstar of crypto and finance. I mean, that's a compliment to Keemstar and a half, isn't it? I love the condescending nature of this video, you know? He's trying to make it seem as if Coffeezilla is just a little drama channel, like me, who just kind of talks about stuff that's posted on the internet. But he actually does a lot, and I mean a lot of research in his videos, and Logan Paul seemed to like them before it was about him. Coffee, you interviewed the developer who stole the game code, fled to Switzerland, and held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated robbery, armed robbery at a liquor store, and the other for, surprise, obstructing the legal process. But yet, you hired him. Sorry, how is this a point against Coffeezilla? He's trying to use this like a gotcha moment where he's like, ha ha, you trusted this guy, but he's actually a criminal when you trusted him with a multi-million dollar crypto project. Like, who's the idiot here? It doesn't surprise me that he lied about having 30 engineers and a $50,000 a week burn rate. On my end, I have 30 engineers, I'm burning $50,000 which, side note, is how this delusionist landed on the million dollar code ransom, but it turns out he only had three engineers. Wouldn't someone with journalistic integrity know their credible source had not only an agenda, but a fondness for orange jumpsuits? But you hired him! What are you saying? You can't turn this on CoffeeZilla no matter how hard you try, okay? You hired him for your project, and tons of people invest in this project when you had people like this working for it. And it's not the only criminal who worked for Logan in this project. Logan literally had a team full of criminals, and for some reason, he doesn't think this is his fault. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with an unsavory individual like Zach Kelling? Yeah, I am. I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process, who has turned out to be a professional con man that I have since learned fooled billionaires, the Mormon church, the owner of the New York Yankees, and now, me. Wow, that could have been so much better. Like, this was his point where he could be like, yeah, he fooled me. I'm incredibly sorry for it. I had a severe and continuous lapse in judgment. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm only here to apologize. All that shit. But instead, he's like, well, I guess that's what I get for trusting my team, you know? It's their fault. They got all these employees. Eh? It's all them. But it's your project. You're the majority shareholder of the project, so you should take absolute responsibility on who is hired to the team. Don't try and blame someone else. Helio, the gentleman who supposedly let his child invest in a cryptocurrency, was allegedly responsible for two rug pulls before you interviewed him. So either you missed that or you knew it and failed to let the public know. Why? Because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy. Okay, so that's like a, a quarter point, I reckon. Like, CoffeeZilla interviewed a bunch of victims who lost money on this coin, and one of them is someone who is also a notorious scammer. But that doesn't mean he can't get scammed either. Obviously, we're gonna have a lot less sympathy for him in this situation, but just because there was one bad guy out of all the victims doesn't mean that we're just gonna now ignore all the other victims who haven't done anything wrong and have lost thousands of dollars. Like, congratulations, out of all the people you scammed, one was a bad guy? Do you want a medal? Wait, you can't even hatch? No, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. You're kidding, you can't hatch? You're kidding, you can't hatch? You can't hatch? Uh, yeah, one second of research would prove that to be false as you can definitely hatch eggs and even breed your animals. Click on that. Oh, we got a duck. And as you pointed out, <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Ray. This is probably the best point that Logan brings up in all of this, even though it's very minimal. But that clip of the guy being excited over a fucking duck. Like, I thought this was a fun game. Do you know how disappointed I'd be if I spent so much money on this and I got a fucking duck? <laughs> I'd be gutted. But yeah, like he said there, Coffeezilla did say that the eggs couldn't hatch, or at least he listened to someone he was interviewing say that, and he posted it in the video. Logan saying they could hatch. I mean, it's really a minimal point, isn't it? Like... The big problem here is the fact that people got scammed, not the fact that you got a duck. And by the way, guy, almost all NFTs are just pictures. No, it's just a picture. Yeah, all NFTs are pictures, which is why I find them completely pointless. But this is your crypto project you apparently spent over a million dollars on, and all people were getting was stock images from Adobe photoshopped with, like, elephant trunks on them. Like, you could have done better than that. Like, maybe hire an artist to create actual original art of these animals instead of just using stock photos. I think that's the point there. So why have you allowed the illegal recording of Jeff's phone call without his permission? And then more like an internet criminal, post it online. So yeah, I guess you could count this as a good point if you want to. I mean, it is technically illegal. I believe Coffeezilla's from Texas, so I'm not sure if it is illegal there. But in California, where Jeff is from, I do believe it's illegal. So if Logan Paul does want to go down the legal route, I guess this is the best he's got. But in the grand scheme of things, this isn't the big deal here, is it, Logan? You scammed your viewers out of thousands upon thousands of dollars. This is fucking minimal. You should be worrying about getting your investors their money back and how to correct the problem that you have caused by your incompetence in hiring absolute criminals than just caring about a fucking phone call that got leaked, okay? Like, no one cares about this. So yeah, technically illegal, he might have a leg to stand on in court, I'm not sure, I'm not a lawyer, but, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Now, although you didn't verify any backgrounds, substantiate any evidence, took multiple criminals' words as truth, says you, says fucking you, you didn't just take their word for truth, you hired them, you give them a salary. Crypto King Jake stole $6 million. True or not, we had already removed him from the team when we realized he was a bad actor and his motives were purely financial. I mean, yeah, I guess he did get kicked out of the group or whatever, but you should have knew that he was a dodgy character before you even try to hire him or try to get him involved in the project. Like, it is so widely known in the Pokemon community, which you apparently love, millions of people have seen videos exposing the fact that he's a scam artist, and for some reason, you apparently didn't know that. Yeah, I'm struggling to believe it. While myself and Jeff sold nothing and made nothing as verified through investigation and the blockchain. Yeah, okay, that is kind of like a decent point, I guess. But the fact that Logan Paul and Jeff didn't make money on this doesn't mean that people weren't scammed because of them. Like, you created a project that was an absolute scam. There are text messages that prove that you were doing dodgy stuff behind the scenes. You then abandoned the project for over a year, didn't speak to any of the victims who lost thousands upon thousands of dollars on this project up until CoffeeZilla made a video about it. That's still a scam, regardless if you personally made the money or not. You're a multi, multi, multi-millionaire, Logan, okay? You're not the big victim here. The victims are the people who have way less money than you and invested in a project that you created because they trusted you and lost a fuck ton of money. They're the victims. You've assumed that CryptoZoo isn't being made. Who are you to decide when the development timeline ends? Oh, that's a lord of shite right there. That is a lord of shite. Who are you to say when the development timeline ends? Logan, you didn't speak to any of the investors who've been worried about their thousand of dollars in the Discord for over a year up until CoffeeZilla mentioned it. You know fine well that you abandoned that project and you had no interest of doing anything with that project. Allegedly. Like, is it a coincidence that as soon as CoffeeZilla exposed this scam, Logan Paul's all of a sudden recreating CryptoZoo and it's gonna come back better than ever? Obviously not. Just so you could enrich yourself in your $10 million studio. Sharp. Was that gonna be like an expose? Like, oh no, the $10 million studio is actually a green screen. Fuck it all. You got him there, mate. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. Well, there you go. He's a. Uh, Suing CoffeeZilla for this, which is just not a good way to go about it, is it? All you had to do if you were innocent is prove all the claims wrong, but you've hardly addressed anything here, really. You haven't addressed any of the text messages or anything. All you've really said is that CoffeeZilla's sources were criminals, even though the reason why his sources were criminals is because he was trying to get the source from the CryptoZoo team. It just so happens that 
You hired criminals. This is such a bad response. It's a really fucking bad response. And the fact that he's now trying to sue for defamation and probably a leaked phone call, I think just makes him seem a lot more guilty in my opinion. Coffeezilla, I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also your your slimiest. So I'm not gonna come on any of your podcasts. If you wanna come on Impulsive and talk about this, that's fine. You've denied my invitation multiple times. You're still invited. It can be a one-on-one. -on -one. Why the fuck would he want to go on Impulsive after you said you're going to sue him? <laughs> like, are you stupid? Oh, I am gonna take you to court and try and rinse you for as much money as possible. But come on Impulsive, eh? It's a number one podcast in the world. We're gonna handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo and I'll see you in court. Oh, come in 23, 24. Of course it is, eh? What a coincidence. But yeah, either way, that was Logan Paul's response. I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. It is genuinely one of the worst responses I think he could have ever possibly posted. And it's embarrassing that he thought that this would be a good enough response and win people over. Literally zero accountability, you know? Like, not even the word sorry throughout the whole video. Even if he did say effing that he said in this video, but then included a segment being like, I want to really apologize to the victims who did invest in this project, who spent thousands of dollars and lost it. I'm going to make effing right. I'm going to make sure you get your money back. That would be a lot more respectable. There would be a lot that we disagree with throughout the video, but at least he took accountability somewhat and he's trying to make it right. There's none of that. Like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.